My name is Chad Altman. I'm one of the software engineers here at Boson Software working on the Boson NetSim. Today we're going to be working on ICND 2 Lab 48, which is spanning tree. The goal of the lab is to set up a basic VLAN configuration across a few devices and then make sure that the router can route between them. For the purposes of this lab in the limited screen space I have, I'm going to expand the lab viewer and drag it over to my other monitor. I also want to give you a chance to view the topology diagram. It's a very simple diagram with three switches, a router, and two PCs. So the goal of the lab is to enable routing between VLANs on router 1. So the first part of this lab will need to establish VLANs on the switch. Before we do so, we'll establish a basic ping between PC1 and PC2. This will just verify we have connectivity between the devices so that later on if something doesn't work, we'll know that it's because of us and not something else. What we just did was ping from PC1 to PC2. Next, we're going to connect over to switch 1 and establish basic configurations. We'll be modifying the first three fast Ethernet interfaces at the same time. Now we'll set up a VLAN. We'll be using VLAN 3 for this lab. And that's the basic configuration for switch 1. Switch 2 will have roughly the same configuration, slightly different interfaces between the connections. Adding the hostname, create the VLAN. And so what we've done is set fast Ethernet 04 to work in access mode because the PC is connected to switch 2 across port 4. So because it is a PC, it runs in access mode, and we're established a VLAN 3 on this port, meaning everything PC1 sends through switch 2 will be tagged as VLAN 3. After setting up access mode on 04, we will set up trunking mode on ports 1 and 2. and now we'll connect to switch 3. Switch 3 will also need a access port for the PC2. In this case it's also fast ethernet 0 slash 4. So setting that in access mode and then setting the static VLAN for this port. The next part of the switch 3 configuration is to also establish trunking between itself and switch 1 and 2. This will allow the VLAN information to carry between the devices. Upon completing this configuration, we should have all VLANs established between the different switches. To test this configuration, we can ping between PC1 and PC2 again, knowing that when the packet leaves PC1, it's tagged with a VLAN 3, but since trunking is enabled on all ports that connect to these switches, that packet should be able to traverse the network and then move through the access port on switch 3 down to, port, down to PC2. So testing this configuration, we'll do the ping again that we did in the very part, first part of this lab. We see that the ping is still working, so we know that the configuration changes we've done are working so far. The next step of the lab is to configure the router. The router needs to know that there's a VLAN 3 that's connected across the network. So in order to give him access to VLAN 3 information, we'll have to configure his fast Ethernet 00, 0 port. So some basic configuration. And notice the command we're typing. We're typing encapsulation, and next would be the protocol that we're using, which is .1q. If you remember earlier, we also enabled .1q protocol across the trunking ports. So establishing the same protocol will allow the packets to, to tra traverse through the router. And then the next part of the command is the 3. The 3 represents 
the VLAN that has already been established. Upon doing so, we should now be able to ping from the router down to both PC1 and PC2. Because remember, earlier in the lab, we configured the entire network segment minus the router with VLAN 3 information, and we enabled trunking between the three switches. Now that we have router 1 communicating across VLAN 3 with the correct encapsulation, he should also be able to ping PC1 and PC2. So trying to ping to PC1. After establishing the protocol configuration, we'll go ahead and try a ping. This ping will be between router 1 and PC1. Upon verifying the ping worked, we'll try a ping to the other PC, PC2. His IP is 192.168.100.102. And now we can see that we've established full network connectivity between all the devices. So the more important part of this lab is observing spanning tree. Now that we have a VLAN 3 configuration on the three switches, we're going to see how spanning tree works and the decision spanning tree makes on who is the most important switch, who is the root bridge. And one thing I wanted to point out here is if you are viewing this video on YouTube, you may want to click the link below and switch over to the Boson website to view the blog. The blog also has uh, more detailed information regarding Spanning Tree and uh, the origination of it and how the basic principle of Spanning Tree works. For the purposes of this lab, we're going ahead and just observe some Spanning Tree output. Before we do so, we'll um, set the priority on switch 3 to make sure that he is the root bridge. So what of type is spanning tree VLAN 3 priority 0. And what this does is this sets the priority on switch 3 VLAN th 3 to 0. And remember the lower the priority the um, better chance he has of getting selected as the root bridge. To observe the spanning tree output we'll do the show span tree VLAN 3 command. What this is showing us is the VLAN 3 information on switch 3. You can see spanning tree is enabled. We're using per VLAN spanning tree. The priority in this case is 0. Remember it defaults to 32,768 but because we did the spanning tree VLAN 3 priority 0 command this VLAN on this switch or this spanning tree instance on this switch has a priority of 0. Because it has a priority of zero, it's now set as the root bridge. You can see this is, this bridge is the root. So the output is broken up into two sections. The root ID, which is the root across the entire network, the entire broadcast network, and the bridge ID, which is the information of this bridge. Notice we um, enter the command show span VLAN 3 before the spanning tree had actually switched to forwarding. It was in the learning state. If you remember, the states go from listening to learning to forwarding. So now that we've passed the time minimum, when we view it again, we can see that all ports are forwarding. Now the reason all ports are forwarding on this switch is because he is functioning as the root. We can also notice the MAC address of this switch is listed, and the MAC address of the root is listed. Now since this switch is the root, you'll notice they are the same. Let's change to another switch and observe the output that will be slightly different. So now we're connected to switch 2. Since switch 3 is the root, switch 2 cannot be. Observing the output, going back to switch 3, we observed the address ends in 3538. So now switching to switch 2, we can see the address is 3538, but this bridge address is listed below as well as his priority. Now something also to notice, we see the three interfaces that are running VLAN 3 spanning tree. Notice one of them is in the blocking state. 
this blocking this blocked port is what removes the loop from the network. If you notice, we have a continuous loop. So all it takes is one port to be blocked on one of the connections to break that loop. And if you observe something else, the cost of this port is 38. So what we can also conclude is fast ethernet 02 has a cost of 38, which is twice the normal cost to traverse the network. That would tell me, since switch three is the route, the packet would have to traverse two different network segments to get to switch three, which is why he has been blocked. So he'd have to go from switch two to switch one, and then from switch one to switch three, if a packet left this switch out the fast ethernet zero two interface. Now remember the packet can leave switch two out the zero one interface, and that would have a cost of 19 to get over to switch 3, which is functioning as the root. So that completes lab 48 of the ICND2 material. Thank you for your time.